Steve Adubato here at the uh, great New Jersey Performing Arts Center, otherwise known as NJ Pack. You have to have great performers, great entertainers here. That's why we are pleased to welcome uh, Jane Monheit, who is a, it says jazz vocalist, but you're so much more than that. Uh, you've been nominated for the Grammys before. Um, you're performing at Birdland, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, right? I just did last week. How much do you love Ella Fitzgerald? Well, she is uh, arguably my main influence when it comes to singers. I mean, I spent probably more time studying her recordings than those of any other vocalist. Studying? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, really spending a lot of time with them and, you know, uh, learning her musicality, her way around the harmony, her time feel, the way she handled lyrics, you know. I, I really just memorized her as a kid and internalized it and it became a huge part of who I am today. Now, you admitted to me before we got on the air that you grew up where? Long Island. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and jazz was a big part of your life growing up? Huge from the time I was born because my mother's parents uh, were huge, huge, huge jazz listeners. So I spent tons of time at their house. They lived very close to my parents. And, you know, they played records for me nonstop. My grandfather taught me almost everything I know about the Great American Songbook. When did you start singing? Birth. No, come on, stop. No, really, I mean, I started singing, like, as soon as I could talk. <laughs> what did you, how about this one? When did you know you actually had a really great voice? Um, I, I don't remember. I was little enough that I don't remember. Because my whole family, they can all sing. Everybody can sing. Like, really sing? Like, my family thinks they can, but they can't. Yours actually can. Yeah, no, they all can. We have a few other professional singers in the family as well. And so I was encouraged from the time I was tiny, everyone always told me, no, you're really good at this, you can do this. I mean, all little children love to sing and dance. Every little kid sings and dances, right. you know. But for me, it was different. It was, you know, keep, keep on going with this. You've got something here, you know, so. So you decide you're gonna have a career at this. Did you ever do anything else? No, I've never even babysat. <laughs> I've Why does that even come up? I've literally never had another job. I've only this sung professionally, it. yeah. You always, try to get paid work singing. Mm -hmm. Since I was in high school. I've worked, since I was 16, I had my first gig when I was 16. Around the time most kids start working. I knew of you, I bet wasn't soon after that, the first time I heard about you. The buzz about you, isn't it, it's interesting, buzz, <laughs> that whole idea. And, but you knew there was buzz about you. Well, it started, uh, around the time I was maybe around 20 years old. Right. It started because I had done the Monk competition, which yeah, talk is, about that. Well, you know, it was major We just had T.S. Monk here, Thelonious Monk's son. That yeah. That had to be. He was connected with the Institute. Yes. And um, that's the where Thelonious I met him, Monk actually. Institute, yes. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a really important thing for, for young jazz artists because it helps you gain exposure. And, you know, people come from all over the world to do the competition. I did it in 1998. I was a senior in college, so the timing was perfect. You know, and I, I came in second, and the woman who won, Terry Thornton, was over 40 years older than me. So I got a certain amount of attention just because I was so young. And the ball just started rolling from there, I suppose. So as a kid, and as a, as a very young woman, this happens for you. And you sign with? Encoded music. What was that like? It was a thrill, you know. Uh, they were a great label uh, because they really gave me a ton of personal attention. Uh, they spared no expense on making great records and really spent a lot of money on good promotion, too. You know, they made records the old-fashioned way. Um, they took good care of me. Mm. They really did. They got me a great start in this business. Fast forward. You're, you're put, working off your own label now. This will be my first album for my, my Talk own about label. That. Your first album off your own label. Well, I'm excited. You know, I. I What's it called? Uh, Emerald City Records. Emerald City Records. Mm -hmm. Does that name mean something? Well, you know, I was obsessed with The Wizard of Oz as a little kid. <laughs> and I tend to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow occasionally. Occasionally. Twist my arm. You know, but uh, so naturally that was the name I chose. But I'm excited because. You know, the business has changed quite a lot. Now we see so many more artists that are self-producing. Uh, and I've learned so much over the years making albums with different labels. Uh, 
I, I've really gotten to a point where I'd rather take things into my own hands, and I'm excited that I have the opportunity to do that. Congratulations, by the way, on doing that. Thank you. The other thing is that uh, we're celebrating Sinatra's 100th birthday. You're celebrating. Right? We all are. Yeah, we you have to, it, particularly if you love music and you're, in your case, just an extraordinary performer. You are performing where in connection with Sinatra? I have a concert coming up um, at my alma mater, Manhattan School of Music, in November. Oh, that place. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Pretty great with place. their jazz orchestra, their jazz orchestra is incredible. They're under the direction of Justin DeChocho, who was an incredible teacher of mine. And yeah, we're going to be playing a whole bunch of really swinging charts, and it should be fun. Sinatra means what to you? Well, you know, he's one of the ultimate interpreters. He was an icon for so many reasons, not only because of the way he handled the lyric, but you know, his incredible vocal control and his swinging. I mean, he was the swingingest singer. Tell folks what that means who may not appreciate it. Well, you know, his sense of time, his feeling of where the beat was, the way he phrased melodies, you know, and just felt rhythm when he sang, the way he sang with the band. You know, it's just so incredibly musical and grooving and beautiful and, and gorgeous. And I learned so much from him, from listening to him, about how to be a better singer in that regard. We come back after this break, we're going to be joined by uh, Billy Stritch. Tell everyone who Billy is. Billy Stritch is uh, arguably one of the greatest, you know, uh, piano players, singers, vocal accompanists, composers, arrangers on the planet, and is also a very dear friend. It's always an honor to work with him. So we're going to be talking with Jane and Billy, and then you're going to be performing together? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's why doing this job on public broadcasting I can't believe they pay you for it. I mean, I actually want the check. I'm, not, I'm joking, but that's why it's just so great. And so I thank you for joining us. Billy will be with us in a moment, joined by Jane, and then we're going to hear them perform later. One on one, one on two coming up <laughs> at the beautiful NJ Pack, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, right here in Newark, New Jersey. Stay with us. We'll be right back. That was great. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by TD Bank, Cone Resnick, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Barnabas Health, the Fidelco Group, Verizon Communications, and by NJ Best. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey, and by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.